Understanding what Aquinas says about faith and reason requires us to set aside some common misconceptions about what people mean when they talk about faith and reason. So one misconception is that um, uh, reason has something to do with science and faith has something to do with religion. So one would talk about God, one would talk about something else. Another common misconception is that reason is how you know things and faith is something sort of personal, um, individual, subjective. The key to understanding Aquinas on faith and reason is that he thinks of both as modes of knowing, that is, both are ways of having access into the truth. And so both, in principle, can give us access even to truths about the highest things, that is to say, about God and things that come from God. And so the, the split between science and religion doesn't make sense. The split between knowing and some sort of personal subjective um, feeling or disposition, that doesn't make sense either. Faith and reason for Aquinas are modes of knowing. Now, when he talks about faith, obviously he's speaking as a Christian. And so he has in mind principally the Christian faith. So authoritative truth from a Christian perspective taught by um, the, the church, taught by scripture, taught by the, the whole tradition of Christian authority. And when Aquinas says that faith and reason are both modes of knowing, in the Summa Contra Gentiles, for example, he gives some examples of each. And when he says that there are truths of reason that it can attain on its own, he mentions the existence of God. When he says that there are truths that surpass reason, he mentions the doctrine of the Trinity, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This he also takes to be a truth about God's nature. Reason can't prove it, but how do we have access to it? We have access to it by faith. Faith is a gift, a grace that's given to us. It's not something that comes by our own power. So when Aquinas says that there's a twofold mode of knowing truth about God, it's very common to say that this twofold mode is knowing by reason versus knowing by faith. Another way to put it um, very commonly used is to say that some truths about God are mysteries of faith, things that can only be known by faith. They're beyond reason. They surpass reason's power, so they're mysterious. But they are true, and Christians claim to know them. So these would be all the specifically Christian doctrines about God, especially as revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. So the doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine of the Incarnation, the doctrine of the Resurrection, all of the things that are specific to the historical um, uh, incarnation of God in the person of Christ and Christ's atonement for our sins and his bestowing of the church through the Holy Spirit, all of those things that are specific to Christian religion, Aquinas would understand as the mysteries of faith that can only be known by faith. But there are other things about God that people don't have to be a Christian to know, that we have access to in principle by the power of reason. And Aquinas says, in addition to things like the existence of God, we can know that God is one, that God is good, that God is just, even that God has providence over all of creation. So for most people reading Aquinas, if they believe these things, they believe these things on faith. But Aquinas's point is that these things can be known by reason, that it is possible for philosophers, say, who aren't Christian, to discover that there is a God, that God is one, that God is good, etc. When Aquinas said this, by the way, he didn't think he was saying anything controversial at all. It's, it's a matter of historical fact that non-Christians, non-Jews, non-Muslims discovered these things through the power of reason. He has in mind principally Aristotle, but many people reading Aquinas today might have even read more Plato than he did. Um, in, in Plato's Republic, there's there's a story of the allegory of the cave and, and uh, stepping outside of the cave to have a vision of the sun. Um, most interpreters review, uh, regard that as a, a, as a very theological understanding that Plato reached purely by reason. So Aqu when Aquinas says that um, faith and reason are two modes of knowing, he has specific kinds of truths in mind for each. And the point is that they are both truths. And they are both truths that we can know, but some truths can in principle be discovered by reason alone, 
simply through philosophical argument, and other truths can't be discovered by reason alone. So again, the ones that can't be discovered by reason alone are those only known by the gift of Christian faith. Um, nobody who claims to have discovered these on their own or to have proven them is actually speaking as a Christian because a Christian believes that it's only God's revelation that makes these things available to us, that God is three persons in, in, in one divine substance, that God became man, that, that Jesus died for our sins, that Jesus was resurrected, uh, that, that he um, was um, the, the, the result of, of the, the virgin birth, uh, that, that he sent the Holy Spirit. All of these things, specifically, very distinctly Christian doctrines, only known by faith. But there's so much else about God's nature that these presume that are sometimes called the preambles of faith. So in order to believe that God became man, one has to believe in God. Many people only believe in God by faith. But in principle, and Aquinas knew historically as a matter of fact, Many people can believe in God without believing that God became man. So there are preambles of faith, truths about God that are known by reason. And these include, once again, that God is good, that God exists, that there is only one God, that God is just. Aquinas actually spends a lot of time discussing all the things that in principle can be known about God through reason alone. So that's a summary of what Aquinas means by faith and reason. They're both modes of knowing. They're both modes of knowing about God, and they um, that their relationship helps us to understand why it is that Aquinas, as a theologian, cares so much about the role of reason in discovering truths about God, and also even in defending truths about God that reason can't prove on its own. So the truths about reason can be demonstrated; they can be they can be positively proven. The truths that are surpass reason that are only known by faith, obviously can't be demonstrated or can't be proven. But reason has a, a, a role here in defending these against objections. So Aquinas says in the Summa Contra Gentiles that reason plays a role both in proving the preambles of faith and in defending against objection the mysteries of faith. The mysteries of faith can only be known by reason, but there's even a role for philosophical reason when you hear an objection to a, a distinctively Christian doctrine, Aquinas believes in the um, compat not just compatibility, but the unity of faith and reason. Truths can't contradict truths. So if we know that Christian faith is true and someone makes an argument from reason that seems to contradict Christian faith, then we know that there must be a rational problem with that argument, that it must not authentically be an argument that is purely based on reason. So reason has what, what we might call an apologetic task. Um, reason can help prove certain things that are known by um, uh, philosophical proof, but reason can also help to defend even the mysteries of faith that can't be proven by reason. So that's a summary of Aquinas on faith and reason and a summary of why Aquinas thinks that reason has such an important role in the defense of the Christian faith.